guys. Welcome to Atlanta Live. So glad to have you tonight. Uh, listen, we've got a great show for you. My name is Jason Barrett. I'll be your host for this evening. And uh, I hope you're in for a good show. We have a treat. We have some great uh, music coming up. And uh, man, some of our guests have got a powerful story, great testimony. I mean, you're, <laughs> listen, we've been sitting backstage talking a little bit before show like we do. And, uh, you know, we have an incredible line up here. I mean, um, there's, there's been some shows I've watched here that have some great guests. We always have good guests. But something special tonight, I'm going to tell you, God's going to do something. One of the things I always ask you to do, if you would, is pick up the phone, go to your, you know, go to your friends, Facebook, whatever you have to do, share with them, let them know we're here. Uh, you never know when somebody needs to hear something they're going to hear tonight. One of our guests, I'm sure, because God orders our steps, one of our guests have gone through something that somebody out there, maybe somebody you know, and it might be you, that they need to hear, something that could change their life. Maybe something that would cause them to not make a decision that, that they were going to make otherwise. Um, all I'm saying is that we, we want to make sure that we get to reach as many people as we can. And you can be a part of that. We don't know who you know. We don't know your friends. And we look to you to do that. So share it on your Facebook site. Make sure people know we're here. We have a great guest coming up, too, in the second hour. You want to make sure. I mean, I'm telling you right now, the, uh, the North Georgia revival has been breaking out. It's a, a story where they've baptized something like 6,000 people in the last just several, I don't know how, maybe less than a year. It's incredible. So I want you to uh, make sure you stay here for us as we go right now, though, to the music, to Bora Adams, If I Can Help Somebody. Good evening. Be in 
Wow, Tabora, amazing vocals. Wow, we've got, we always have great music guests and tonight is no different. We're so excited and uh, you know, we've got a great guest right now too that's about to come here uh, to share some of their testimony and story with you. Um, they operate uh, some drug rehab ministry um, and he's written a book and him and his wife are here to share from their experiences. I wanna just introduce you real quickly to Steve Fallon and his wife. Ruth, how you doing? Yeah. Ruth. Hi, Stephen. Ruth good Fallon, to, how you doing? So good to meet good you. Good to be here. Guys. So glad to yeah. see you guys. So tell us a little bit about, um, you know, like what 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 brings you here? What is? Tell us a little bit about your book. Well, and the book came out in January, and right. it's something I had been working on for a few years. Uh, we ran some folks in our church through some of that material, and uh, what we found was there was a group of people who are in recovery. And they kept having uh, a cycle of recovery and relapse, recovery and relapse over and over again. And after working with addicts many years, I began to realize there are a lot of people helping with getting people clean and sober. Right. But sometimes we're not doing a very good job of helping people rebuild their life. And so when a person is living with the devastation of addiction and they feel like they can't ever catch up and they can't ever get their life back together, a lot of times they get to a point where they just want to quit. Right. And so I began to realize that a solution to a lot of the relapse that we see is to do a better job in helping people have the abundant life in Christ and really make progress in rebuilding their life to something worth living sober. And that's wow. the subtitle of my book, A Life Worth Living Sober. Now, what have you guys been able to do? What, are, what doors have been opened for you with this yeah. book? What's well, the book? through the book and just a lot of other things. And we had a, a center for a few years up in Ellijay, Georgia, called The Bridge. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so from that, we um, had a chance to minister to families. Right. And we had a lot of activities for families. There was a lot of fellowship going on. We had concerts. We had lots of small groups, support groups. And from working with addicts of myself over 30 years now, you know, I began to realize that there's a real need for ministry to the whole family. And that's what we focused on is family resource centers. We did that also when we were missionaries in Jamaica, we raised up a center for families. Uh, right recently though, uh, we went to Me uh, Mexico and my wife can tell you a little more about that, but it happened to be for her father's funeral. But he had been a veteran missionary 62 years in Mexico. And as we were there uh, at the funeral, God yeah. just spoke to both of us and called us to Mexico mm -hmm. to take our ministry there and begin to minister to families that are struggling with violence and addiction. Right. You know, a lot of people right now are putting up barriers and, you know, there's a lot of bad press about <laughs> Latin America and so forth. You know, we feel like it's time to run to the battle, go right. there and make a difference. Wow. And so that's our heart. And uh, mm -hmm. we're going to be working with Global Teen Challenge, raising up a new uh, ministry center there, rehab center in Mexico City and, and building a coalition of churches committed to restoration Amazing. in people's lives. Yeah. Ruth, tell us a little bit about your part of this story. Well, I was born and raised there. I spent 25 years there. My parents were missionaries, as he said. And Steve and I have been praying about possibly moving there for the last five years, but uh, we didn't feel like it was God's timing until we were there at the funeral and we're standing by the graveside and we're watching them lower the casket into the ground. Right. And one of our family friends starts shouting because there were several hundred people standing there. Mm -hmm. He starts shouting, this is a seed we're planting in this land of Mexico, and it's up to all of us to see that this seed bears fruit. Wow. And uh, so many other things that were said at the funeral and at the viewing, we, we just looked at each other and said, it's, it's time. time. It's time. It's time to yeah. go. It's amazing. Yeah. And I've been working with domestic violence the last five years, so, so I'll be working with victims of domestic violence. So and when she goes to Mexico, other women there that, that know her, and she has lots of friends there because she grew up there. Right. And they're just drawn to her when they have been suffering um, some kind of violence or problem in their home. And, 
And unfortunately, Latin America has more than its fair share of domestic violence and different problems that go on. And so she's going to have lots to do helping women uh, in Mexico as well. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. So what, what do you guys plan to do? What's the next step? Well, we're just two weeks away from pulling out of Georgia. So the 21st, we're scheduled to, we've got, we sold our house, we sold our vehicles, and we're down to just uh, enough uh, boxes to get in a little U-Haul cargo trailer. Wow. And we're going to head to Texas and get our boxes across the border to her nephew, that's our plan, yeah. and uh, leave, the, leave that with him and then send the truck once we get there to Mexico City. So we'll be back up in Dallas for about a week and toward the end of the month flying down to Mexico City. What do you yeah. see looking at the entire vision, let's just say the five and 10 years from yeah. now, what do you hope to accomplish there and what you're doing? Wow, well, the, there's a multi-year project that we have envisioned. We're gonna be using Living Free. It's a, a group of uh, folks that have come together. There's some wonderful ministry going, up around, uh, going on around Chattanooga, around this Living Free ministry where they have modules that they teach people on everything from how to restore your marriage, how to deal with addiction, they deal with codependency, what is that? Anger, you got management. anger management. So they they have written these Christian curriculum for small groups right. that really help people in a restoration of families. Mm. So some churches are now doing this uh, where they do it like a Wednesday night and they just have uh, groups meet in different rooms and they have dinner and, and there's just a lot of healing going on. They're also doing it under a thing called the Transformation Project up there and they're working with people in the jails and getting them out. And so we want to work with churches and in the jails too in Mexico if we can get there. Right and build this coalition of churches doing restoration ministry in their churches and then eventually get to that place where that coalition helps us uh, to raise up this Teen Challenge Center. We're also going to be working with a great local church. Uh, it's called Iglesia Centro Cuautitlan. We'll be in Cuautitlan, the suburb of Mexico City. Mm. Shout out to those if they ever <laughs> see the, this video or anything, but uh, Pastor Jorge Martinez and his family that actually came out of a church that started in a Bible study that her father led 40-something wow. years ago, Amazing. which is now a 10,000-member church in Mexico, Mexico City, uh, uh, wow. uh, Calacuaya Christian Center. Amazing. So this church was planted out of that church and we're going to be working with Mexican uh, nationals that are you know there's lots of evangelicals in, in different movements around Mexico City now and they send out missionaries and they plant churches and so it's going to be a great group of people to work with is it a dangerous areas it is yeah yeah, yeah. What, what what how do you tend with that well you know? first of all you listen to the people on the ground you know right. <laughs> you, right, right. I mean you know you listen to what they tell you um, and we have we have great people I you know missionaries are always safe I believe two things if you're in the will of God yeah and then secondly if you if you're a good learner not just the teacher right. and you pay attention to what the nationals tell you um, the border towns, the coastal towns, those are the worst ones with the cartels. Yeah. Mexico City has a lot of law enforcement. There are a lot of soldiers based around there too. So it tends to be a little more orderly. The cartels don't war in that area quite as much. But my father's, one of my father's favorite phrases was, the safest place in the world is in the middle of God's will. Yeah. Wow, that's so yeah. true. And that's he it. went to a remote village where he had to take a donkey or a horse to even get there. And there was some fanaticals in there that uh, they decided there was a gully. On one side is 13 men with rifles. On the other side is this little shack of a church. And as my dad and the people start leaving the church, they start shooting. Wow. And he grabbed two people and flung down on the ground. And, and he said, the Lord gave him that verse, all that have traveled with me, I have given you all those that travel with me. Mm. And they saw the pastor in a bad spot, and they said, come over here. He got up, a shot rang out, he fell down. They thought he was shot. Yeah. When it was all said and done, not one single person was grazed wow. or hit by a bullet. Unbelievable. And, and my dad couldn't sleep for a while, a few weeks, because he saw the bullets hitting on the rock wall behind ladies carrying babies. Wow. But <laughs> the protection of God was there. Amen. And wow. the leader died of leprosy. Yeah. And the other, a few others died pretty bad deaths of these men that were shooting. Right. And the rest of them went to that church and said, pray for us and tell us what we need to do that we don't die. 
Unbelievable. So, so I've seen God's protection. Gosh, divine yeah. protection. Yes. That, yeah, this, we amazing. believe in that. Uh, we, like I said, we served for eight years in Jamaica. We lived there. Um, we learned to be able to travel all over that island fairly safely. We, I mean, I'm not going to say nothing ever happened. I got robbed a few times. Right. right. Um, but, uh, you know, we've never really been hurt. Yeah. And God's always protected us. And uh, we've seen horrible car accidents and people dying on the road. I mean, driving in those countries can be really scary, too. Yeah, right. um, but uh, you know what? God really is with you when you know you're following yeah. his purpose. And, uh, you know, like Paul was shipwrecked, but he lived. Right. 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 So it doesn't mean you're not going to have a struggle. Oh. But God will save you if you listen. That's good. To what he's telling you as you go. Yeah. Absolutely. Amen. Let me ask yeah. you this. Take us back a minute to the beginning. What yeah. what what led you to the point where you decided yeah. that this was the life that you yeah. guys together wanted oh, to live? Wow. Well, uh, you know, I, just to kind of talk a little bit more about why I wrote the book with that too. I mean, I met Ruth in 1986 at Christ for the Nations at a Bible college in Dallas. Right. But just a year prior to that, I had had my final relapse, if you will, with a life of drugs. Okay. My life uh, as a young man was a disaster. Right. I mean, God has done so many things for me. I've been clean 30, I don't forgot how many years now. And I've been heal, you know, working in the business of restoring and healing others. But, you know, I've been a, a preacher, a teacher at a Bible college. I've been able to be a missionary, co-pastor. I've even admitted, been an administrator of a Christian school. God has given me so many opportunities over my lifetime. If you had known me as a teenager, right. I would have been probably voted the most likely to crash and burn <laughs> or be dead by now. Wow. You know? uh, so, but, I mean, I started doing drugs at 13 years old. Mm. And... Um, was was doing LSD and meth and all this stuff, uh, even heroin by the time I was 15. Right? So my life was really a disaster. And, um, but you know, I, I, I'm sure for some people listening out there, you may understand this. I'm not the only person maybe you've ever heard to say um, they, that they ran from God, but they had a call of God on their life. Right. And maybe you're out there listening today and you're running from God or You've been out there feeling like there's no hope. Listen, there was no hope for me as, as the way I felt at, at that time. Right. And, and so, but God began to lead me out. And one of the things I teach in my book is how to re restore your identity, your right. understanding of freedom. You have to have that redefined in your life. Right. And then also following God to find that sense of purpose and really discover that he loves you mm. and begin to hear from him and, and he know that he has a plan for your life and learn to follow it. Right. You know, intimacy with God mm. grows faith. Yeah. And if you'll take baby steps, one of the simple things I learned to do was tithe my money just to learn okay. how to exercise faith. Right, right. But there's so many things that God will teach you if you will listen and begin to follow. And I had to be obedient to a lot of things yeah. to get out of that life. Right. But I know it can be done. And so, but then we met in 86 and she took me down to Mexico and I was smitten. I was like, wow. <laughs> I mean, her father, her father was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. You Amazing. know, I mean, I just loved him. And um, there was never a verse in the Bible that I couldn't ask him about. And he couldn't just sit there and teach you on it for a half an hour, you know, and, yeah, and cross-reference. Yeah, oh my, wow. one of the most <laughs> learned men I ever met. Really? And, uh, but I mean, he was also a man who was fearless and an adventurer, and he just had this zest for just being, living life to the full and sharing the gospel. Right. To me, he was like a Christian version of Indiana Jones, you know? So, <laughs> and uh, Bullets yeah, flying yeah, and yeah, bouncing yeah, off so, rocks, yeah, right? <laughs> he, was, he was the real deal, though, wow. you know? And he taught me how to have confidence oh, in the things of God. Right. You know, I had none of that. I didn't grow mm. up with that. I, mean, I grew up in church. Yeah. But the idea of having faith to go live somewhere in a foreign country, be a missionary, to lay your life on the line, wow. um, to believe God for miracles. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't really understand that growing up. Gosh. And uh, it blew my world wide open getting to know her family. And so. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. And then a few years later, we got married. Uh, well, yep, a year, less than a year later after the first time I went down there, we got married in their first year. 
87, and then uh, we went to Regent University for a while up in Virginia Beach, and then we went to Jamaica to teach at a Bible college together, and mm -hmm. we were there for eight years. So we were working with crack addicts on the streets of Montego Bay right. during the last three years of that time. So we cut our teeth on some pretty hard cases. <laughs> you know? I can imagine, yeah. man. You guys yeah. have seen some stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, we got about a, maybe a minute and a half left okay. or so. I just want to find out what... What can we do to get your book or, or get, find more information out on you guys or, you know, just, if you will, tell us what we can do to help. Yeah. The Relapse Solution is on Amazon. Yes. And um, restorationhousehub.org is the website for the yeah. mission. Yeah, okay. Re okay. www.restorationhousehub.org. Right. They can also find the book if they just go to lifeworthliving.site. So okay. it's www.lifeworthliving.site, yeah. S-I-T-E. Okay. Um, but if, it, if all else fails, just look up stevefallon.com. You know, it's right, right, I, have right, that, right. I have that too. But, um, <laughs> uh, but, you know, we would really love to hear from you. If you're interested in the book, we'd be, you know, we're trying to help get the book into rehab centers and support right. groups. So if you're involved with a group of addicts and you're looking for some new material on how to rebuild, especially for aftercare, maybe after treatment, um, be sure and get in touch with us because uh, we'd love to help you get the book. We have some sponsors that can help pay for the books and give them away to some people. Wow, yeah, that's awesome. Do you, do you have that going right now? I do. Now it's on a limited basis, so I can't just you know take a ton of requests. Sure. But I will try to find a sponsor. Yeah, for anybody that says they they're trying to use it in ministry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome guys. Yeah. It was so wonderful to meet y'all. Yeah. Thank you so much for Thank doing what you're doing. Here. Thank you for being on the front lines down there in Mexico, making a difference. We have got some more music right now. We're about to go to Miss Tabor Adams. Take a trip. Come on, y'all. I know you're in your house, but you put your hands together for this. Come on, Matthew. Yeah. Y'all gonna come on this ride with me? I'm going to take a trip on that good old gospel ship and we gon' sailing through the air I'm going to take a trip on that good old gospel ship and we gon' sailing through the air. And when my ship comes in, what, what? I'm gonna leave this old world of sin. Yes, and we gon' sail.
right to Bora, and that was amazing, wasn't it? She told me, she goes, that song's gonna be fun. And she was <laughs> not, she did not disappoint. We were having a good time, all of us up in here. So, guys, I've got a great friend here, wonderful person that's going to bring some great information to us. She's got some things she wants to share. I wanna introduce you to my next guest, Bishop Marlon Thomas. How you doing, Bishop Thomas? I'm doing good. How wonderful. are you? I'm doing great. Having a good time tonight. <laughs> yeah. It's a wonderful show. Got great guests like yourself. Thank if you. If you will, tell us how you got started in what you're doing and, and a little bit about yourself. You know, that's it's, it's that's kind of loaded right there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that song got me fired up. I was ready to shout and praise God and everything. <laughs> but, you know, I tell you, God is doing so many amazing things. Right. I'm the senior pastor at Lifeline Family Worship Center, been pastoring for 16 years. Wow. Yes, yes. And this year we celebrated this February, our 16th year. Amazing. And God is just doing so many great things there at Lifeline. I'm just so thankful to the Lord for mm -hmm. what he's doing and the growth of the ministry and just how he's just sending people that just love him and our vision is building strong leaders for the kingdom of God right. and so that's exactly what we're doing you know wow. we're building strong leaders for the kingdom of God amazing where, where did you start in ministry at like like where, what was the time and age when you decided you know this is what I want to do with the rest of my life Nine years old. Is that right? The Lord called me at nine years old. We, wow. I lived in East Orange, New Jersey. Yeah. And um, there was a family that lived in the apartment building that I grew up in and they attended church and I would see the church van come and pick them up and I asked my mom, mom can I go to church with them? And she was like, sure. And so I started attending church with them and here I am. And I tell people I've had the same passion for God um, now that I've always had all throughout my life. Haven't been perfect. I'm right. not gonna <laughs> right, sure. I'm not gonna, you know, portray that, but yeah. I have really always been passionate for God. So did you have parents that were in the ministry as well? No, my parents really? were not in the ministry. I actually wow. led my mother to Christ. I was wow. raised in a single parent home. Shout out to all the single parent moms. Yes. And uh, I was raised in a single parent home and my grandmother lived there and my sister and so no I led all three of them Golly. to God at nine years old. I always say they were my first church members. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, now let me ask you this. Yeah. At nine years old, who planted the seed in you? How did that go? Like, like who was the first somebody reach out to you at a vacation Bible school and invite you to come or something? Like, how did that go? I, you know, if I had to trace it back, um, we would come down what we call South. We called right. Georgia South back then. Yeah. Could live in, growing up in New Jersey. Right. And, um, and my great grandmother would take us to church uh -huh. every Sunday. We would spend one month out of the summer with her. Yeah. And I believe that those Sundays and those vacation Bible schools wow. every summer, you know, yeah. that we were there seemed like she took us from one church to the next church. Mm, that's <laughs> to vacation yeah, right, school. right. <laughs> and so the seed had to be planted at some point that's during amazing. that time. And we would get back to New Jersey and go back to life as normal. We take it for granted sometimes, you know, when we just, an invitation to bring somebody yeah. to church. You know, nowadays, especially people are like, oh, I don't want to push my faith on them, whatever. But think about how impacting it's been. Exactly. How many souls have been touched because of your ministry? Yeah. And the thing about it is the same thing with children, because I was yeah. just a child. And most people, you wow. know, uh, sometimes discount um, children when it yes. comes to ministry. And I'm certain somewhere along that line, those vacation Bible school and Sunday services, the seed, I tell people all the time, Pastor, right. that the seed of the word, God said his word won't return void. Amen. So when that seed, you know, is sown, it's not coming back void. God is that that seed of the word. It's going to spring forth fruit. No one would have known that it would have been from me at nine. And then here I am. We ain't going to talk about how old I am, but a couple of years later. Right, you know, right, right. Here I am now yeah. pastoring and, you know, leading other pastors and Amazing. doing so many great things for the kingdom of God. That is incredible. Yeah. What kind of uh, what kind of team leadership? Uh, building are you guys doing? You said you, you had some things where you're all sending people out and equipping them and things yes. like that. How, how does that look? What is it's you know what we are doing great. We will yeah. actually launch Lifeline Virginia uh, wow. on June 2nd of this year. Hmm. I'm so excited. Pastors Chris and Alicia Stone, they're going to be pastoring Lifeline Virginia. We will start our Bible college, um, giving out wow. degrees with uh, we're actually doing a dual degree program of right. the master's and bachelor's de uh, bachelor's and master's degree program starting uh, 
May, I can't think of the ex exact date, but starting right, right, right. Um, this month, actually starting this month. So we are true to, you know, to the call of God on our life to see wow. that the men and women of God, that God send into Life My Family Worship Center, yeah. that they grow up and become all that God has called them to be in Him, that they find their purpose, they find their destiny, yeah. they walk in the plan of God, you know, for their life. God has a unique plan, as we both know, right. for every individual that comes into, you know, the family of God. When He, when we're born, we're born with God's um, fingerprint on us and, right. and immediately from that moment he's already destined us. I said to Lifeline um, even recently you know I was teaching them and I said nobody can do what you can do. Right. What God has called each one of us to do, I don't care how good somebody else is doing what they're called to do, nobody can do what we're called to do. Everybody yeah. has their own unique call, their own unique assignment. Right. And that's one thing that I encourage pastors, because when you're young in the ministry or right. just ministry leaders yeah. oftentimes, uh, one thing that's lacking is mentorship. And so many right. young pastors or young starting out in ministry, you know, they're just trying to discover it. They're comparing their ministries to yes. either larger ministries and they're waiting for this sudden boom of, right. you know, growth and that sort of thing. And it's like, you have to just stay in your lane, right. find what God has for you and work that vision. You yeah. know, God is going to send provision. He's going to send the people, yeah. but you have to work that vision. That's incredible. I always look for people like you that are, that are giving, because hey, listen, I, I, I made a commitment to myself. I'm never going to stop learning. Yes. I'm always going to learn from anybody. And so, especially when I see great leaders who are doing what you guys are doing, people don't realize unless they've led a ministry, when you're working against the spiritual aspect, the spiritual war, and you're equipping people and you're establishing this thing like you guys are doing that's so impressive and is doing so much and it's effective, that doesn't just come natural. That's great leadership. And so, you know, um, I just applaud you for that. That's really Thank awesome. You. Well, you. What do you think is your main heart right now? What, what's, what's your main heart and, and what is God using you for right now in this season? Wow. One thing that I have coming up um, is I'm doing a Mother's Day brunch for mothers of deceased children. My oldest son was killed um, in 2000, October of 2016. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, that was the darkest season of my life. Right. Um, right. I questioned everything about God, I have to be honest. And yeah. sometimes yeah. people think as a pastor and a leader, you have all the answers, oh, that you no. can go through <laughs> life's highs, lows, tragedies, ends out, and that you just bounce back. Because we preach faith, you know, we live faith, yeah. but that was a time where my faith was on trial. Mm. And I questioned God, I wanted yeah. to know why my child, you know, right. I even said to God, Lord, I've been serving you since nine years old. Okay, I wow. haven't crossed every T and dotted every, you right. know, I, but I've been faithful to the call of God on my life. Yeah. And, um, and I, I just couldn't believe, you know, that God would call my son home. Right. And so what I decided to do, even though I was going through the healing process, I was still pastoring, um, it was like, God just gave me so much energy. I can't even explain it, honestly. He gave me so much energy. And it was just one project after the other project that mm. God just kept giving me. And I really, I was, it was just my way of dealing with grief right. and, um, and still holding on to my son. One of those things, um, I started writing music and uh, me and my son, we have two songs out there and I have about a total of four or five songs. Right. I was never a recording artist before yeah. this time. And now God has taken our songs international throughout the world. Wow. My, my son, Kenny Gaines, hi Kenny. He's a UGA <laughs> graduate oh, and okay. played basketball there. Wow. And, um, and Kenny now plays overseas in Lithuania. Wow. And so they had their, um, they had the slam dunk contest out there. And he said, Ma, he said, I was at the table judging. He said, now I hear our song playing in the back, you know? What? And so I was thankful. <laughs> Who would have wow. known the blessing is those lyrics were written out of a place of pain. Right. But the song was called, um, uh, from the, well, the line is from the pit to the palace. I had to mm. dig my way out. The song title is wow. dope. And yeah, it's is. what the millennials say in our time and age, but we put a yeah. little spin on it, declaring our purpose emphatically. Mm. And so so here they are, the Lithuanians are singing our song, you know, so it's amazing how God will take your pain yeah. and use it as fuel for your purpose to get to your destiny. So I wrote a book and here I am this Saturday, yeah. May 11th, um, I'm doing a free Mother's Day brunch. Wow from mothers of deceased children. Mm. I wanted to do something so special. You know, um, oftentimes if you haven't, and no one wants to go through that, right. but if you haven't experienced it or know someone close, yeah. you never stop 
missing, loving, or mourning your child. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people think that it's, you know, you two years, five years, 15 years, right. 20 years, right. you never stop missing your child. That child is still close to you. Right. And so I wanted to do something where mothers could come together and we could just lean on one another. Yeah. We could be each other's strength, you right. know, a support group, a support system. I, I was saying to someone actually yesterday, Megan, yeah. I was telling Megan, I said, I believe that God brought me to a place of healing in it, that I'm now in a position that I can help others to walk through that dark tunnel. Wow. Isn't that yeah. amazing? Yeah. Who would have ever thought that that kind of healing can come? Only God can do that, right? Yeah. I mean, only God. Oh, I yes. can't imagine. What well, if you had the question asked to you? Because I'm sure there's somebody watching this right now, and there's no telling if they have gone through similar. Um, and let's just say they're locked up in a prison of, yeah. of pain and bitterness, and they've just not been able to get out of it. What would be the best advice that you could give them? You know, the one thing that I would tell anybody, any mom or, or dad that has experienced the loss of your child, um, I would first tell you that, you know, my heart goes out to you. That's the first thing, my heart goes out to you. No one deserves to bury their children. But, you know, you have to just take grief in your own timing. You know, that's the, that's the key thing. I know that I could not have done it if it wasn't, I could not have gone through it if it wasn't for God. I needed God. Yes, I questioned God. Um, even as a pastor, I questioned God, you know, and I wanted to know, you know, like I was saying earlier, why my son, why my child? But it's ironic that if you put your faith and your trust in him, that he will teach you how to find the purpose in the pain. And this is the thing about it, Pastor, yes. is that I pastor a church that some may consider a small church. We're less than 50 people, you right. know, in our ministry. And we're in a storefront building, as some would say. Right. And so you may not have heard of Lifeline Family Worship Center sure. before that. But God took that place of pain. He mm. took that and he built a platform right. out of my son's death because I said yes to writing a book. I said wow. yes to writing the songs. Right. I said yes to keep going. He took that pain. He built a platform and now people who probably never heard of Lifeline Family Worship Center or Bishop Marlon <laughs> Thomas, they now have heard of me. Right. But it takes right. you saying yes. Sometimes you have to just pull, pull yourself together. I know what it's like. I thank God for my husband, Dr. Freeman Thomas who walked me through that, you know, a loving mm. church family that was there. And I know that the times are hard, but you have to make up your mind to say, you know, this is not the end of the script. Right. I always tell Lifeline, you got to look at life that it's just a comma. It's not a period. It's not the end of the story. Right. You know, you go through grief again in your own time and you don't have to let anyone rush you. That was the thing mm. about it. I think at times I was so busy trying to get back to pastoring yeah. because as pastors, we are just naturally, you know, um, we love to help, you know, right. we love to serve. And when you have a smaller ministry, you know, you're doing more than pastoring. You're doing a lot more. You're scrubbing <laughs> toilets and all kinds of stuff, right? Yeah. Exactly. You're doing more right. than just, you know, right. the normal. And so yeah. that's the thing about it. You know, there was no staff that I could depend on. Sure. You know, there was no associate pastors right. <laughs> that was going to come and <laughs> let me take six months off. But the blessing in not having so much of the support system that I wished at times I could have had, yeah. I found my strength in God. Wow. And I believe that me preaching every Sunday. I preached the Sunday uh, following my son's death. Wow. And I believe that me getting up in that pulpit was telling the devil, you can't mm. have my life. Man. You can't have my destiny. At some point I, I felt like I wanted to go, but it was a fighter on yeah. the inside of me wow. that was saying that God has purpose in this. And mm. my first song that I wrote was from pain to purpose. Wow. And we did, um, we did a conference out of that, you know, honoring my son's memory yeah. and then from pain to purpose, you know, and all these songs, you can get them on justmarlin.org as well, you right. know, but the thing about it, I found the purpose in the pain. I decided wow. not to sit where I was, but to honor my son's memory and legacy, mm -hmm. you know, and, and let the world know he was here. That That's was amazing. what it was all about. His life was not in vain. That's so awesome. Yeah. We got about 30 seconds left. Yes. If you would share with us a little more about this event you have coming, time, location, that kind of thing, yes. how we can get 
signed up for that. Okay, yes, it is Saturday, May the 11th at 11 o'clock a.m. to 1.30 um, p.m. at Lifeline Family Worship Center, 138 Rainbow Way in Fayetteville, <laughs> Georgia. And you can register, it's free. All you have to do is text 770-885-9490. Just text your name. We'll reply back with um, letting you know that you're registered. And I would love to have you as my special guest. I want to share so much to, to the moms on Mother's Day, and I just want to help you smile again. Bishop Marlin, you are an inspiration. Thank, Thank you. you so much Thank for coming and sharing your story. Thank you for having me. Guys, if some of you have a prayer request, we just want you to call that number right now as we go to the phones. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining me here at the Atlanta Live Prayer Room. My name is Marissa Daniel, and I am a proud member of Beyond the Veil Ministries, located in Fayetteville, Georgia, under the leadership of Senior Pastor Sheldon Pritchard. My sisters and brothers, I come to you this evening to please dial in if you are in need of prayer. We have some prayer soldiers that is here today that is willing to pray with you. So don't hesitate. Pick up the phone, and please dial the number at the bottom of your screen at 770 3 we will love to pray with you. Also, for those of you who are compelled this evening to give your lives to Christ, today could be the beginning of your life if you say yes to Christ. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 states, Say it with your mouth. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. If you believe that, then you are born again. So please, say this prayer with me. Father, I know I am a sinner and I ask you to forgive me. I believe Christ died for me and God has raised Jesus from the dead. I want to turn away from my sins. Jesus, come into my heart and be my personal Lord and Savior. I promise to obey you and follow you all the days of my life. Now this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. If you are in need of prayer, if you need an encouraging word, if you need someone to stand in agreement with you, feel free to give us a call. We are here for you. God says when two or more are gathered in his name that he is in the midst. So please, we want to thank God because this evening I received a praise report that Miss Denise got her a new job. Now that is a testimony and we thank God for blessing Denise. So feel free ladies and gentlemen, if you guys are in need of prayer, if you have a testimony that you want to share, if you want to vent, if you need someone to talk to, feel free to dial the number at the bottom of your screen my family my church family is here for you now let's go ahead and go back to the set i'm marissa daniel it's real important guys for you to be talking to these prayer team uh, folks that's what they're here for and you can see now based on some of the conversations we have with our guests why it's important for you to reach out and share you never know who's going through something that one of our guests the story the testimony see the bible says we overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony it's our stories that make a difference it's what we've been through that makes a difference make sure you share and reach out to somebody that might need to hear what we're talking about i'm on the set here now talking to my friend tabora tabora how you doing i'm good so awesome good. we've had such a good time have you been yes. having a good time today? i have been having a good awesome. time awesome Excellent. you're making this beautiful music you have amazing vote all of us out here are just like what in the world where is that coming from <laughs> <laughs> little frame and big voice right yes i get that a lot <laughs> i yes. bet i bet so let, but let me ask you now I bet this, this has been birthed in you somehow, some way, usually. Like, I know you've shared a little bit, but tell us a little bit about the, the pain side that's brought some of this beautiful music out. Well, um, I can tell you about my last song that I've written, I Just Can't yeah. Do It. Yeah. Um, it was inspired, I, I have a mental illness. I have bipolar disorder. Okay. And um, it was inspired through my depression at one time that I was going through. Right. Um, I Just Can't Do It. Yeah. I can't oh, do it wow. without God. Right, right. Um, and I understood that I didn't have to feel like this. Yeah. And so I got in touch with my uh, physician. Right. And got on some other medication. Yes. To balance it out. Right, right. I also want to talk about the fact that I'm graduating this Saturday. Awesome. Shaw University <laughs> with my master's in divinity. Amazing. So, um, wow. congratulations. You can accomplish things regardless of right. what you're walking with. Right. How did it make you feel when you got that? diagnosis when you you know like when they said you have bipolar disorder what was the first thoughts that came through your mind I was excited Roy, Roy, Roy. I was excited because yes. it helped me to understand why I did the things that I did uh, why yeah. I acted the way that I did right 
Right. Where I put myself in certain situations that I shouldn't have put myself in. Sure. Yeah, that makes a and lot of so sense. And so I actually went to the um, pharmacy. Yeah. And um, I'm for, I, I've got a funny personality. And I, <laughs> no re I, I went back and I said, I'm bipolar. Right. Give me my medicine. Wow. Because I wanted to know what it would feel like to be sure. normal, yeah. so to speak. Right, right. Okay. Wow. But, you know, I want to talk about it because it's something that people don't talk about in the community. That's true. Um, they put a stigma on mental illness. And I've got three degrees. Right. I've got an interior design degree, I have an organizational leadership degree, and now I've got my master's. Amazing. So there's nothing that you can't do no, with God. Nothing you can't do. That's, That's right. amazing. So you, uh, you also said you have a little bit of a, uh, something I struggle with too, where we tend to see squirrels every time we're focused on something, right? Like, what? Uh, share a little bit about that. ADHD? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you keep 10 tabs open on the computer and you're right. bouncing back and forth between them all. Right. Uh, it was funny because we dealt with the bipolar first. Yeah. And then we uh, moved on to the um, ADHD, and um, I'm on medication, and everything is balanced. And I tell everybody, yeah. a lot of people have mental illnesses that they don't know about. Right. A lot of teenagers yeah. have illnesses, and parents tend to think that they're just going through um, a teenage, you know, situation. It's right. going to be all right when you get a little older. Right. And they come home, and their children have committed suicide or done different things. Yeah to affect themselves, their cutters or their, their right. they have an illness. Yeah, yeah. And it's important to uh, recognize um, depression. Yeah. It's not always situational. Right. Sometimes it's uh, an illness. It's a medical quote. Right. Right, absolutely. And it needs to be treated. Wow. So it's just important that um, parents and that people who are older, I mean, I didn't find out, I'm 55 on May 30th. Wow. And I didn't find out I was bipolar until I was 48. Wow. Right. Well, we just want you to know that we're here for you, and we appreciate you bearing your soul yeah. and sharing, because a lot of people need to hear what you've right. gone through. And all of that difficulty and pain that you've gone through, it produces the most beautiful music, and we're Thank so you. grateful for you being here with us. Thank you. Well, I plan on allowing God to use me to minister. Amen. And um, to be the voice, uh, you know, say the things that maybe people don't want to say. All right. Well, let's hear this next one. What you got right. coming up for us? His eyes on the spell. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Does my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus, Jesus is my portion? i 
song. You know, it's amazing how before God uses us, He usually marks us. He allows us to go through a season of testing of some kind. It's been said that the vessels that He chooses to use, He first breaks. And we see that time and time again. The thread tonight even, as we've looked at these people, see you've heard stories from one man who was an addict and his, in his own words, his life was a disaster. And God restored him made him into something beautiful and now uses that very thing that the enemy tried to destroy him with. That's the very thing he uses in his ministry. And then Bishop, you see where she had such a great loss that most people can't even begin to fathom and understand, but God's taken that deep pain, the darkest day of her life, and is using it to fulfill the ministry, the call, the purpose in her life. And our music artist, Great music coming out, the joy of music that had to first be filtered through depression and difficulty and bipolar disorder. God takes things that are marred, scarred, and broken and makes beautiful out of them. As I was on the way here tonight, actually, I always ask the Lord, what does he want me to talk about if I get a chance to talk some? And, you know, one of the things that he put in my heart just on the way here, and I believe now after seeing kind of the guests and talking to them, this is the theme of the show, I believe, and that is that, you know, I look at the story of Ruth. Ruth, you know, the, the first part it sets up, you may not have even noticed this part before about Ruth, but it says the, the man's name was Elimelech. That's who Naomi was married to. It says his wife's name was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Milan and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other one Ruth. After they had lived there about 10 years, both Milan and Kilian also died. And now Naomi was left with her two sons and her husband. Now imagine if we just stopped the story right there. That's, that's how Ruth, the book of Ruth opens up, was, is with that dark moment, this season of loss. You have Naomi who's... Literally, she says, don't even call me Naomi anymore because I'm not beautiful. My life is not wonderful. Instead, call me Mara. Call me, call me a name that means sorrow, that means bitter, you know. And, and what, what's interesting is, is that we, don't, we get to know the whole story, but she didn't. In that moment, all she saw was that her life was over and there was no more moving past it. But what God does sometimes is see... The beauty of the story was, of course, you know, most of us know that Ruth met Boaz, but that could never have happened. The Boaz-Ruth connection could never have happened without first being set up by this dark season, this day of death, this time of tragedy, the moment that was probably Naomi's lowest point. Her husband died and now her two sons. Back in that day, a woman had no hope of ever providing any food, nothing. They, they didn't have rights and, and stuff like they do nowadays. There was no way she could make it. And it seemed like it was over. She even told her daughters, Orpah and Ruth, go, go back to your hometown, have a life, mine's over. And it's interesting that Orpah says kissed her goodbye, but Ruth clung to Naomi. Two things God blesses. He blesses us when we're when we endure our hard seasons and persevere, and he blesses when we're faithful. God blessed the faithfulness. We don't read the book of Orpah. Orpah kissed goodbye. But it was Ruth that clung in faithfulness and stuck by her side. God blessed that. That's why we have the book of Ruth. Now what's interesting is 
this story is amazing because she, you know, Ruth meets Boaz. It's a miracle the way it all works. She's the one that gets redeemed by him and she marries him. And God had it ordained all along because let me share this little nugget with you. While Naomi didn't know what was going on, they persevered and moved forward. God had a divine connection already established. He leads Ruth straight to Boaz. They meet, they end up getting together, they get married, they have a child, and that child ends up being the great, great, great grandfather of King David. On down the line, if not for this connection happening, do you realize King David is the key to Jesus Christ himself being born of that lineage? If David had never been born, Jesus would never have been able to come in the earth through him. I want you to realize something. This is tying it all together. That, that, that whole book opens up with this dark moment where her husband died and her two sons die, and it looks like everything's hopeless. But if not for that dark season, it never would have pushed Ruth and Naomi into position where the connection with Boaz could happen that would allow the child to be born, that would one day birth King David, that would one day allow Jesus Christ himself to come into this earth. See, our dark times can be the most important times. Yes, right now when you're in that season, it doesn't make sense. I told somebody one time, if you take a puzzle with a beautiful mountain and flowers and everything, and you have one dark black piece in there, it's just a solid, it looks like the blackest of black, dark season, but you can't just pitch that piece out of the puzzle. Without that piece, there's no contrast. The puzzle's not complete. Friends, I'm going to tell you something. I know that somebody's watching me right now, and you're in a dark season. You're in a time that you don't understand, and you feel like there's nothing but bitterness. Just like Naomi, you feel like the Lord has just turned against you. But I've got good news for you today. That is not the God that we serve. It says that our steps are ordered by Him. Sometimes those steps order us to go right through what the Bible calls the valley of the shadow of death. But we will fear no evil because he's with us. Your dark season is not the end. Your dark season is positioning you. The difficult seasons we go through, they push us into position for God's purpose to be fulfilled. I'll promise you this. The day came when Ruth was rejoicing. Naomi felt her joy restored. Everything, Job himself had everything restored to him. When you do things God's way and you're faithful, he blesses your faithfulness. When you endure the difficult times, he positions you so that his purpose can be done in your life. And when you are right in the heart of God's will and purpose, there is nothing like that. All right, we're going to a break, guys. When we come back on the other side, we've got Marty uh, Derricott, who is going to be uh, telling us about the North Georgia Revival. So stick around. we got some good things coming.
Welcome back. Welcome back. As promised, we've got some great things coming. My friend Marty Derricott here is the executive pastor at the Christ Fellowship in Dawsonville, and they are experiencing some incredible revival. Some of you might have heard about it. Charisma Magazine covered a story on it. I don't want to spoil it. Without further ado, let me introduce my friend Marty. How you doing, sir? Jason, good to be here, man. Oh, good to see you, man. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. What in the world is going on in Dawsonville? Wow. So, uh, man, last January, yeah. our church started the year off just like many other churches with 21 days of prayer and fasting and right. uh, just began to come together corporately and, and uh, do what other churches are doing and start the year off right. But, man, something happened. Something shifted between... Uh, probably day 10 and day 17, something happened and we just began to, to change our position and our stance from praying for provision and praying for church growth and praying for things like that. And we just shifted our prayer uh, to pursue one thing. We shifted that prayer to his face. Wow. To his face. And, um, mm. you know, the psalmist wrote and he said, Lord, when you said, seek my face, my heart says, your face, Lord, I will seek. And so, we turn that prayer to not wanting what's in his hand, right. but just like Moses prayed, God, show us your glory. Mm. We didn't pray for revival. We right. didn't pray for church growth or programs. We prayed for his face. Wow. And, uh, and he honored that. So February the 10th of last year, yeah. um, revival, awakening, movement, whatever you want to call it, mm. it began to happen there in, uh, in Dawsonville, Georgia, wow. 139 Hightower Parkway. Huh. God said, this is the place. Right. that I want to choose to pour out my spirit. And, mm. uh, you know, in just over, what, 14 months, I guess now, we've baptized just under 6,400 people. 6,400 6, people. 6,400 people God. In, uh, in, that, in that short time frame. And, you know, we were talking off air. People are flying in from all over the nation, the world. Wow. Um, this past, past weekend, Sunday night, we baptized in three different baptismal pools because the, the growth and the attendance has just got so so much, there's so much desperation, so much wow. thirst and hunger right. uh, from the people. We're looking for the authentic. Yes. That's what people are hungry for, the we'll authentic. Show me what's real. real. Right, right, I've right. I've seen the fake. I've seen the counterfeit. Yeah. Show me what's real. Wow. And when the real shows up, revival breaks out. God, God moves among, among his people. And so mm. uh, that, that's what kind of started this whole thing. Our pastor, uh, a former Baptist pastor and wow. never had an open vision before in his life. And huh. he's in the sanctuary praying as we pray five to six hours a week corporately now. Right. Uh, he was in there praying one, one time and uh, was walking across the platform and looked at the baptismal pool. And of course it was empty and the lights were down low and he was praying, yeah. but he had an open vision and the Lord showed him that baptistry full of water. Mm. And the Lord spoke to him and he said, if you'll fill that thing with water, if you'll baptize with water, I'll baptize in Holy Spirit and with fire. Wow. And it's, it's Matthew 3. It's what, it's what John said, that uh, one coming after me. I'll baptize you in water, but there's one coming after me. Right. He will baptize you in Holy Spirit and with fire. And since then, mm. the attendance has went from 100 to 200 to 500 to, you know, some nights they'll be up to around 2,200 people and having to wow. send people home. We just don't have the space to put them. It kind of seems like it has the feel of like the Brownsville revival that broke out so many years back that some of us might remember. Um, so, so what, what are some of the testimonies you've been hearing? Not, not people aren't just coming and being baptized, but they are coming up out of the water with healings, right? Like, yeah. So it's anything from, uh, from migraines, uh, 20 years of constant migraines, mm. 22 years. I think it was actually of the testimony of this young girl that 22 years just suffered with intense headaches and migraines. God. And she came to be baptized in the water. She heard that God was moving in our church and moving in the altar and moving in the Baptist, uh, baptismal pool. And she came and uh, gets healed and. Uh, 22 years of migraines gone. Wow. Because when God shows up, darkness flees. Yes, amen. Sickness flees. Whew. Disease has to scatter. Wow. And so uh, that, that's, that's what it is. And people ask all the time, uh, Jason, they, they ask all the time, why, why water? Right. Why the baptismal pool? Yeah. 6,400 people baptized. Yeah. Why did God choose water? Well, I don't know. Right. <laughs> I don't know why God chose a bush to burn and not be consumed to speak to his his servant. I don't know. Right. I don't know why you could take a stick and throw it down and it become a snake and pick it back up as a stick again. Right. I don't understand. I don't right. understand why Balaam's donkey had to speak. Right. But I'm glad that he chose something yeah. to reveal himself to his people. And it just happens mm. to be a, a baptismal pool wow. in Dawsonville, Georgia, of all places. Amazing. And so this revival, it's nameless. It's faceless. Yeah. It's Dawsonville, Georgia, for crying out loud. And right. it's kind of ironic that Dawsonville is known for its moonshine, the moonshine festivals. Wow. Uh, moonshine back in the day was called 
fire water. Oh, that's right. And so it's just a very prophetic thing that God would choose something that the world has turned for evil. God says, no, I'll restore it and I'll bring, I'll bring my fire back. And so why water? I don't know. It, it, I do know this, that no revival uh, throughout history is the same. Some right. there's tons of conversions. Yeah. Uh, some there's healings. This one's got a little bit of makeup of all of it. Yeah. And so revival doesn't have to look like what we think it is. You can't schedule it. Right. And, right. Uh, it's, it's not an event. Yeah. Revival is not an event. Revival is when God awakens dead hearts and brings them back to life. And so, hmm. uh, yeah, no flame is the same, man. man this revival is a little bit different. But one of the testimonies is migraines. One is a, a lady who was uh, stage four cancer. Wow. Terminal cancer. You're dying. Really? And uh, she had a PET scan scheduled for to be in Gainesville. And yeah. a friend of hers had heard about the revival and said, hey, you need to go check out this revival in Dawsonville the mm -hmm. Sunday night before your PET scan. Right. So she gets in the water. Her name's Lorraine Barge. She gets in the water with her husband, John. And I always ask four questions. What's your name? Where are you from? Yeah. What do you want the Lord to do tonight? And do you want to hold your nose? And so uh, <laughs> she, she said, I think it'd be real cool if I go to the doctor tomorrow for my PET scan and they find no cancer. Man. And I said, like I do many Sunday nights, our team says that's... That's where we're going to hook our faith. Right. We're going to put our faith with your faith. So that's what we prayed. Wow. Lord, it would be so cool tomorrow if Lorraine got to go to this, this pet skin and then they would yeah. find no cancer in her body. We'll give you all the glory. We, yeah. won't, we won't give the glory to the baptismal pool or any right. person or any man or ministry. Right. God will give you all the glory. And so she goes for that pet scan. Yeah. The doctors come in and bring their team and say, listen, we cannot explain mm. this. Here's your x-ray of the 50 cancerous lesions in your body. Unbelievable. And here's what we find today. And they put that picture up of zero cancer wow. in that lady's body. <laughs> that is amazing, man. That's that is good. unreal, isn't it? God. I mean, we know God does these things, yeah. but it still just blows us away, doesn't it? Like just in awe of him, you know? Yeah. I think what's cool, too, is that the revival brought a lot of the churches from the community around. You know, like, like sometimes... Um, in the past, you've heard of different things breaking out like this, and it focuses on one area. But like a friend of mine, Pastor Don Allen at Warhill, yeah. he asked me, he was like, have you heard of the North Georgia Revival? He was like, you need to get over there, you know. And um, and I know he was even coming and, and speaking. That says a lot about your pastor, by the way, that he is not protective or territorial. Instead, he sure. opened it up, and it seems like it's... So talk about that a little bit. Yeah, and so... A couple of the key elements for revival is, number one, a hunger and a thirst for his face and not right. his hand, like I said before. Another is, man, you've got to get to the place where there's no pride. Yeah. I tell people all the time, God is not, he's not trying to hurt your, your feelings or anything. He's trying right. to kill them. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to crush us. <laughs> right. He wants that wine to come forth, and the only way to get that wine is to crush the grape. Right. The only way to get that yeah. fresh oil is to crush the olive. And yeah. so uh, we just knew that we had to get some offense Get rid of offense yeah. and ask the Lord to forgive us and cleanse us. And so our pastor began to open up the pulpit for local pastors to come in. Who wow. does that? Right. Who opens up their pulpit for churches three miles, four miles, Amazing. ten miles down the road. Right down the road. And so That's they come and incredible. partner with us. And, and it's Luke 5 all over. Luke oh, 5 is. where the disciples were frustrated. And yeah. He said, Simon, what are you doing? He said, I'm washing my nets. I've been here all night. Caught nothing. Wow. He said, how about you go back out there and <laughs> cast your nets? And the Bible says, Simon caught so much, he had to call for his partners. Yes. There's so many people coming, yes. so many needs. They need a miracle. They need, right. they need their marriage restored. They need salvation. They need deliverance. Mm. And it takes a community. And so we just, we, we've, we've kind of just put this phrase out that there is unity in our community. Wow. And God is doing an incredible thing through that unity. Mm. And uh, there's a partnership that's forming there. And we love it because it's not one man, one, it's not a ministry, it's not right, a woman. Right, right. It is God himself bringing his people together to become the body of Christ that he's called us to be. And when that happens, Man. when he sees the brethren walk together, yeah. he shows up in a so powerful true. way. Man, I think it's awesome. It, sh it tells me that God saw the heart of your pastor and said, I can trust this man with this because, because this thing went Viral, you know. I mean, it, it's you know, Charisma Magazine did a big story out. Next thing you know, you you said now how many people you only baptize a certain amount, and then it just. Poof, out. So when Charisma wrote the article back in August, we had baptized around 750 or 800. Right. And then since August, we're up to. 6,479. 6, 6, it's amazing. So just under 64. And am I right when I say this has been several churches now that I think that you guys have kind of went and ministered at other places and it's breaking out in those places too. It's right? breaking out in Moody, Alabama. Wow. Their, their team just actually came. Their pastor, Matt Scott, his yeah. wife, Stevie, they just came and helped us. They owned one of the pools for four hours. They took, right? uh, they took over one of the three pools that we needed this past Sunday night nice. to baptize all the people. Wow. So Moody, Alabama's experiencing a great outpouring. Uh, different other parts in Alabama, Florida, yeah. uh, Dallas, Texas, and the Plano area. Man. God is just 
He said, I will pour out my spirit right. on all right. flesh. Amen. We have to understand we are flesh. Wow. We need to put the flesh under. Yes. And once we begin to do that, get rid of fleshly things mm. and seek his face. Amen. Then he shows up, just like he promised. Second yeah. Chronicles 7, 14. That's right. We just come together and pray, seek his face. Man. Turn from our wicked ways. The Bible says he will hear from heaven. Right. He will forgive our sin. Right. And he will heal our land. Mm. There's something about that heal our land that's very important because yeah. all through scripture, God chose water. I never saw this until I started studying about this water. Wow. All through the scripture, Genesis to Revelation, God chose water. Yeah. And so in, in 1 Kings 18, he chose water once again with Elijah. Wow. When Elijah's right. standing there in the midst of a severe drought and famine, right. he's standing there and confronting 850 false prophets. Yeah. And he says, hey, here's the deal. Mm. You call on your God, I'll call on mine. Right. And the God who answers by fire, yeah. fire on the water. Right. The God who answers by fire, that's the God we'll serve. Right. And they called out to their God and nothing happened. Mm. Elijah built his altar and he said, pour water on it. Mm. Second time, pour water on it. More water. It takes water. Right. Third time, pour water on it. And then dig a trench around that altar fill it. and fill it with water. Wow. Right. And so the Lord spoke to me and he said, hey, I always preach, Jason, and, it's, and it preached real good. Yeah. Elijah wanted to get it good and wet right. so the people couldn't deny that when God showed up with fire, sure. it was good we and wet. All preach to, that, right? Yeah. yeah preach that. The Lord spoke to me. He said, Marty, in the midst of severe drought and famine, mm, what is the sacrifice. one commodity that's wow. needed? Right. I guess that's what you're saying. Yeah. Water. In verse 4 of 1 Kings 18, it says that the Ahab would send his horses and his mules miles and miles away just to find a bush they could chew on, wow. a little bit of grass, because they were in drought and in famine. Right. And he pours out the most precious thing mm. in that moment. Man. The most precious thing. Right. They needed that water. Yeah. The mules needed, the horses needed, the people needed it. Right. And Elijah said, we're going to pour out the most precious thing. Mm. When we pour out the most precious thing to us in our lives, God will pour out his power and his presence. Wow. That's Every time. good. That is so good. Every time. My goodness. So you guys are just having this incredible move of God. People are being healed. People are being set free. Um, and it's just, I, I've watched Facebook videos and stuff of it, and, and it's incredible. I mean, so, so you, you'll, you, man, I'm still trying to get over that word you just dropped. That was so good, man. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> just give me a second on that one. That was just digesting. You know, sometimes you just get hit with something. You're yeah. like, wow, I've got to remember that. that was really yeah, good. Yeah, take it in. Yeah. So you're, you've got this line of people, sometimes 150, 250, 300 people at a time, right? Yeah. And y'all start, how long does this go, you said? So... Our team usually gets in the water about 7.45 or 8 o'clock on Sunday evenings. Once the worship's done, the preaching's done. The preaching is very important. Worship's right. very important. Yeah. And then about 7.45 or 8 o'clock on Sunday evenings, our team will get down in that water and we'll have a moment to pray and right. prepare ourselves for what's about to happen. And then there's most mornings we get down around 3 or 4 o'clock. That's not odd. Mm. But there was one morning when we baptized uh, from 7.45 or 8 o'clock till about 7 a.m. the next morning on Monday. Unbelievable. So my, my wife is... Uh, she's she's getting ready to go to work, and we're I'm just coming home, and so it's uh, it's it's kind of an incredible thing that <laughs> oh, that many people are so hungry no kidding. that they will wait eight, ten, twelve hours mm. just to get into not just water. It's Dawsonville tap water. Right. It's just right, an old right. baptismal pool that was built 15 years ago. Right. But they're looking to get into that moment where God yeah. shows up, and when He shows up with power, the darkness flees, the sin flees, the the, the disease has to run. That's and amazing. so, man, so, one, so many testimonies, but one, oh, yeah. one of our favorites is, uh, you know, a couple that comes in and he had signed the divorce paper or getting ready to sign the divorce papers, his right. wife getting ready to sign the divorce papers. They both got their attorneys just setting up the meeting wow. and he comes and gets in that water and he says, I am believing God for my marriage and I'm not ready to give up on it. Wow. Three weeks to four weeks later, we're baptizing his wife. The next oh, week we're baptizing oh, his daughter. Your family's kidding. been restored. They've been, they've been there just about every Sunday night. And so. It's not just one thing. It's not just, okay, God's healing deaf ears right. or God's just opening the blind eyes. It's Man. across the board. It's a gamut. If you come sick and hurting, yeah. if you come lost, if you come bound, mm. God loves to deliver. He wow. loves to seek and save the lost. That's his heart. Yeah. That's why Jesus came. Right. To right. heal the brokenhearted, to, to set captives free. That's why he came. And so... Yeah. It's such an honor to be able to host His presence. We're not hosting this great revival. We're hosting His presence. And so Amazing. what an honor, man. we got about two minutes left. I want you to share just a minute about if somebody is listening right now and they are like, i got to get to that fire water, you know, um, what is the time frame, schedule, all that? How does that all look? And, how, and what do they need to expect when they're coming? Yeah, so, so Sunday evenings at 5 o'clock, 445, the doors will open. 5 o'clock, we have corporate prayer. 
We believe that prayer is the catalyst for revival. Oh, yeah. right. Prayer is the catalyst. There's right. no other way around it. Yeah. There's no secret ingredient other than prayer. Right. And so at 5 o'clock we begin prayer, 6 o'clock the service starts. Around 7.45 we'll open up the baptistry for baptism candidates. They give an altar call, the guest speakers. They'll give an altar call for those who want to be ministered to at the altar. And then an altar call for those who want to jump straight into the baptistry, begin um, ministry time there. And so you don't have to bring anything. We have, we have scrubs, we call them grave clothes. We've got undergarments, we have everything you need. People fly in from Tokyo, Japan this weekend. Wow. People are coming from Kuwait, London, wow. Canada, all over the world, Australia. Wow. And, and they just come as they are. Man. We change their clothes for them in the back. They, they come out, they get in the waters, they go back and change it to the clothes and, and do the best they can to make it back to their vehicles because the power of God is so strong. But yeah, 139 High Tower Parkway, Dawsonville, Georgia. Is there a website? They There's can a website, up? cfchurch.tv. All yeah. the information's there, hotel, uh, uh, lodging information, all that's there on the website. So. Marty, thank you so much for coming out, man. Yeah. It was an absolute what honor. And I can't wait to get out there and see what all you guys are doing there. Guys, you need to get to that North Georgia revival. Now, we got some revival going on up in here. Let's go to my friend Tabora, and she has a wonderful song, I Just Can't Do It. song was written out of a time Tabora was telling us in a, a dark season for her, a uh, time when she was going through some depression and struggling and not really understanding or knowing 
uh, the reasons why. And uh, her story is powerful. And it's, it's amazing. Some of the best songs sometimes are written out of a deep sense of anguish and difficulty in our lives. Well, um, we don't have much more time today, but what we do have time for is to, we want to let you know that the phones are here for you. The prayer warriors are here. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the requests. Me and Pastor Marty here are going to pray over your requests, actually. Uh, Marty, do you have some, some requests there, too, to pray over? Who, who needs our prayers tonight? Yeah, there's uh, a lady who's overwhelmed with her work and responsibilities, and uh, Kim with some stomach virus going on right now. Jim, needs direction in his business. We're right. Lay hands on these and pray for these. Amen. Yeah, I've got an unspoken request from Jennifer in Augusta, Georgia. She wants us to pray uh, for the thing that's on her heart. You know, God knows all about it. Um, and then we have the Evans family. They've had the loss of a loved one. Uh, we're going to pray for them for healing and restoration. Um, then Reggie's dad had heart procedure with eight stents. But you know, God's a healer. And we've heard about stage four cancer being o overnight being lifted so God can heal and do anything. Well, um, Pastor Marty, would you mind just leading us in some prayer over these requests? If be you honored to. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Father, we just come before you right now, Lord Jesus. We thank Jesus. you that you are healer and you love us so much, God. You love us so much. You said, Jesus, not only to die for our sins, Lord, but to take away our sickness, our disease, our heartache. And Father, we just lift these up to you every situation, nothing too big, nothing too small for you. Lord, we pray for direction for business, for Jim, God, that you would make crooked ways yes, straight Lord, for him. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, that you would give him supernatural wisdom. And, and Lord, you would open doors no man could shut, and shut every door no man could open. Thank you, Lord. Lord, for this precious family who's lost a loved one. Thank you, Jesus. God, would you, would you bring peace and comfort to them, that peace that passes all understanding, Lord. God, we just speak that over that family right now. Peace be still in the midst of chaos, that your peace would overwhelm them right now. Lord, for this precious lady with a stomach virus and some issues going on. You. Lord, you said in Jeremiah, you came to heal our wounds and, and God to restore our health. So we speak that yes. over our precious friend right now, that right now, Thank you. right now she lays her hand over her stomach, God, Thank that your you. healing power would flow through this airway, through, through this television set, God, and go yes. to her and minister to her thank you. your healing power and your touch on her life, Father. We thank you for every pastor that's, uh, that's watching right now, every pastor, every leader that feels so discouraged. They give and give and give, and they're discouraged. And God, we just pray that encouragement would come to them, that you would lift their heads, that you would let them know that they're, they're, they're a voice to this generation, God. Thank you. I pray that you'd send them, Lord, reinforcements and replacements to help them. Yes. in their time right now. Send them to the churches, God. Give them strength. Breathe life into them again. Send water to them, God, that brings life and refreshing over every need, Father, for direction, for comfort, for healing power, to move to these, your people, your precious people that you love so much. Would you move on their behalf, Lord? Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You know, we've had some, uh, some people tonight, too, that's been on our heart, obviously, that, uh, that have lost children and that have gone through addictions and some of the things that we've talked about tonight. Um, would you just pray too over those? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, thank yeah, you yeah, so yeah. Much. Father, we just thank you for those children who, Lord, they have been strung out. They've been, they've been uh, gripped by this foreign substance, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. These drugs and alcohol. Father, I just pray for the families right now that the families, the mothers and fathers would rise up thank you, and speak to those mountains thank you, Jesus. of addiction and abuse. Lord, they would speak to those mountains over their children and they would proclaim they would command those children to come back home, to come back home as prodigals, come back home. We thank you for single mothers right now, Lord, who have done their best to raise yes. children yes. on their own. We pray for, for those mothers who have lost their children, who have deceased children, God, that you would comfort you, them. Jesus. Lord, that you would give them pain, uh, purpose through that pain, God, and they would turn that pain into that purpose, Lord, and it would fuel yes, them. God. Thank you. It Lord. would fuel them to speak into other people's lives, God. We call the children home. We, we don't believe that you're going to move in a generation down the road. We, we believe you want to move in a generation right now. Yes. So, God, we call these children home, prodigals. They've come home, that you would move mightily. God, that you would send an awakening to middle schoolers and high schoolers and young adults. And it yes. wouldn't just be mama's revival and grandma's revival, but it would be a revival of the youth, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. That you pour out your spirit, Lord, on all flesh, that your fire would fall. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 And we just got about a minute left. Tell us about this youth event you guys have at your church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So youth conference coming up. It's the North Georgia Revival Youth Conference, July 5 through 7. We've got uh, that Friday night, July 5th. Um, 
Pastor Josh Carter is coming from Ormond Beach, Florida. Right. July 6th, Saturday night. Jeannie Mayo, she's been serving in youth ministry, yeah. young adult ministry, 50 years, five decades, yeah. one of my yes. mentors. Wow. I love mom. And then I'll be speaking this Sunday night, July 7th. You can register on the uh, website, cfchurch.tv. Is there other youth groups that are going to be coming out to this? Yeah, tons of youth groups coming out. We've got a, we've got enough room for about a thousand students and leaders. So wow. sign up today, get registered. It's all right there on our website. Man, Click the how link. How many do you registered. think you have right now? Oh, I don't know. I know one thing. That yeah. It'll be it'll be pandemonium once they get there. We'll be baptizing every night. So oh, that's, so listen, youth pastors, you've been something. you've been believing for revival Ooh. in your students. Get them signed up. Get them mm. registered. And yes. Listen, there's there's tons of conferences out there with games and gimmicks and things like that. We will not be that. We're wow. praying for the fire of God to hit these students right. and have a, a, a eternal change and an eternal shift in their lives where they mm. will never thirst again. That sounds amazing. In fact, I'm going to get on our church and make sure we get our youth out there to that thing too. We have some incredible youth pastors and uh, we need to get them involved in that because I can imagine what well, I would want my own. I have teenagers myself. I have yeah. four teenagers in my house. I want to get them up there Come on. And, and be a part of that thing. That sounds incredible. I want, I want my two girls experiencing the power of God every day of their life. and so. Yeah. This Amen. will be one event, I promise you. Wow. It will be life-changing in a, in, a, in a branding kind of way where they'll be marked yeah. for the rest of their lives. Awesome. Guys, this has been a great show. We've had a good time. We've had wonderful guests and anointing. I felt the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. And uh, as you know, there's some good things going on. Make sure that you get to these events, guys. Look them up. Look the websites up. Uh, this is Facebook streamed, which is great because if you miss something, you just rewind and go back and you can find the address, the information, the website you need. We need youth groups to get signed up for this thing, the, the, the Mother's Day event too that's, uh, that Bishop is putting on. You need to check that out as well. Um, they, we've got good things. And then look into the uh, the, the, the addiction ministry of the Fallons. They, they have a great ministry as well. So thank you so much for your time tonight. Before we leave, we just want to say a brief prayer and a blessing over you. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless you, your people, yes. God. We just command right now, Father, that those on the out there that are watching us now, that your favor and your blessing would be upon them, God. Bless the fruit of their womb as you promised, God. Bless their children. Cause them to be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, Father. We declare in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Come see us again now tomorrow night. We'll be here at 7 o'clock. 